Yo, what's up YouTube? This is Pure Kicks, back with another video. And as you guys can see by the title, today we're comparing the Nike PG2 with the Nike Kobe 360s. Let's get it. Real quick, before we get into this, if you enjoy this video, like this video, thumbs up, all them things there. Hit subscribe, subscribe to the ting, hit the bell next to the subscription. Stay notified to everything good Pure Kicks. And let's get it. Kobe Bryant and Paul George, both fantastically smooth scoring guards. I love watching them both play. Kobe Bryant, as many of us know, the sensei, the master, the black mamba, now retired, but his legacy will always live on. And we can see that in his shoe today. Paul George, from Palmdale, California, very close to LA. It is widely known that Kobe is his favorite player of all time. And he obviously now has his own signature shoe and it's very exciting for us to compare both of these shoes in the studio today. Let's get straight into it. So T, between the Kobe and the PG, which to you is aesthetically pleasing? Both of them. Both of them are clean. Cool, is that the way, right? Thank I've you. said it now. Yeah. Okay. Which is cleaner? Cool, let me get for that. Kobe is hella clean still. Hella clean, people. Hella clean still. Now, I've said it in the performance review and in a couple of comparisons. The PG didn't strike me in the pictures. Got them on feet, they look all right. From down, they look all right. They look good, they look clean. But these Kobe's? But these Kobe's? In this colorway, in that black colorway? I oh keep my saying goodness, it. Oh my goodness, the black colorway. Black colorway. Handled. It's tough. Therefore, Kobe things. Handled. Next up, talking about the traction in both shoes, over here in the Kobe 360s, what we have is this individual node crisscross type traction pattern, which really, really surprised me to me. Mm -hmm. This traction pattern, out the box, I was good. Did not have to worry about slipping and sliding, didn't have to worry about wiping the shoe, the outsole of the shoe. I put them on, feet for two hours, and I was good. And I st still am good, and I've taken these for almost over three weeks now, and they're absolutely incredible. Over here in the PG, we've got that psychedelic wavy traction pattern, which is almost like continuous nodes as well. Bit the floor. Ate it up. I don't know why I just did that. You hungry? Hungry, but still. Bit the floor very, very well. You do get a little coverage, you have a little wrap around, especially here as well, which is also very good for traction. The only thing holding it back, the only edge it loses is the durability. It did come away a little bit on our translucent. Uh, the solid, not as quickly, yeah. but that was the only, only thing. That's probably the only reason why the Kobe gets that cheeky edge. Cheekiest of edges. Cheekiest. Cheekiest so edges. cheeky, but it's very close. But Kobe comes out on top, even though it's close. But we love Kobe. Next up, we're talking about cushioning. And over here in the PG, we've got that full length Phylon midsole, which has been called out, which feels a lot softer than your regular Phylon but then you also have that fantastic four foot zoom bag, which is 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. It's thick, it's and thick. it works like a charm. It feels awesome. I think the placement of it is perfect. It's We're seeing four foot, four foot is just four key. Foot zoom. The Phylon already takes care of your impact protection when we're talking the heel and across the foot, but that four foot zoom bangs severely. So yeah, what next? Oh, okay. This is next, Timmy. I don't know what it's... The future of cushioning. What we have here is a combination of Lunalon and React. And this right here feels absolutely incredible. It's a drop in midsole with concentrated React in the heel and more firm Lunalon in the forefoot. And it feels fantastic. The balance is brilliant. The plushness and the court feel, that combination, which is so hard to nail down, Nike have absolutely smashed it out the park. This isn't a discussion. But I would like to say that the cushioning in the PG could have been better if it had been full length zoom. Right. But unfortunately, Nike held out on Paul George and didn't hold out on Kobe, so the point has to go to Kobe. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next up we have materials. And I have this smile on my face because again, I get to talk about 360 degrees flying it. Flying it everywhere. Everywhere flying it it feels absolutely buff. It's lightweight, conforms to your foot absolutely beautifully. It feels amazing. 
it's just incredible. It's so comfortable that combined with the midsole cushioning makes this one of the most comfortable shoes, if not the most comfortable shoe I have ever played in. You played a lot of shoes, man. I've played in a lot of shoes to me. A lot of kicks. In a lot of kicks. And this one right here is up there, isn't it? It's up there. I hear that. My only thing with the materials is that flying it, unfortunately, is not the most durable material. But if you got money, spend it. <laughs> I did. And it hurt. <laughs> so over here in the PG2, we have a medley of materials over here. Medley, I like that. Medley, like little that. one. We've got that overall mesh construction along with suede overlays and a neoprene for the inside as well. They come together fantastically well. They do. Fantastically well. They feel buff. Breaking time is close to zero. Close. Peng, bruv. I like it. It is very, very peng. It bangs. It just feels nice. Yeah, man. It just feels hella nice. So I know you say flying it is a ting. 360 flying it is a ting. There's discussion to be had. I think there's a discussion to be had. Fair enough. I, res I respect had. your, you know, your opinion. To an, extent, to an extent. I really appreciate that. However, Kobe gets it on. It's easy. Very easy. Moving on to the fit in both shoes over here in the Kobe. The shoe does fit very, very well. Doesn't matter what foot type you are, the flying material conforms to your foot and really make sure that every time you play in the shoe, it just feels and fits better and better each time. I really enjoyed the fit in the shoe. The minimalistic layer ring of the shoe feels very, very nice. So the fit in the shoe is beautiful. Over here in the PG2 when we're talking fit, that medley of materials comes together yet again. All the materials go where they need to go and do what they're supposed to do. When you've got your mesh in the forefoot, you've got your suede in the back, your neoprene on the inside, it really hugs the foot, stretches where the foot needs to, you're taken care of and it's really hugging the foot the way it's supposed to, so they do feel sock-like. They sock -like. really, like a really cozy, plush, mesh suede and neoprene sock. That's how they feel. So with all that being said, PG2 comes out on top. Next up, talking about the support in both shoes, over here in the Kobe, we have our usual suspect. The outrigger of the shoe provides the lateral support, the heel counter to make sure your heels tied into the shoe, and then the overall lockdown of the shoe to make sure there's no slipping and sliding in the shoe. It's, it gets the job done. It's not crazy. It's not LeBron soldier. It gets the job done. I wasn't worried about it. I haven't rolled anything yet. So, support is good. Over here in the PG2, support is also pretty good. Outrigger as well for that lateral support. We've got that forefoot band I spoke about earlier, which actually helps with that forefoot lockdown. The neoprene material also helps with that fit, which also helps with that overall lockdown. But the PG2 is missing much of a heel counter. It's there, but it's really small. And it, if I can do that with my hands, yeah. what happens when I'm on the court? So, so um, it's missing a little something, something. They're both missing a little something, something. The Kobe, the overall lockdown of the shoe is not as great as the PG's. Whereas the heel count on in the Kobe is a lot better because there is none now. in the PG2. So they're both lacking something, but the Kobe lacks less. So therefore the point has to go to the Kobe because- I have to agree. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> Last, and I'm not sure if this is least or not least, I don't know Timmy. Um, talking about price slash value for money. The Kobe, ladies and gentlemen, is priced at 160 pounds. I don't think any shoe should be priced that highly. Nike thought it's okay to do that. They did it. I still bought them. So here they are. The PG on the other hand, 95 pounds. Well then. Only reason why I have a problem with this, Nike has other shoes with very similar, maybe even more technology in, in the shoe, i.e. the KD11, that also has full length zoom, but it's somehow placed as 30 pounds cheaper, which doesn't make sense to me. So yeah, and this shoe is 95 quid, so it's a no brainer. It's an absolute no brainer. It's what you get, what yeah. you get for 95 quid with that four foot zoom, the fit in the shoe, the traction is sensational. Don't get me wrong, I do believe that this is a better performing shoe, not by a mile, 
just by a little bit. But I don't think the shoe is worth £160. I don't think any shoe is worth £160 unless it can make me fly and let me miss a jump shot, which is not what this shoe did. So yeah, the point has to go to the PG2. No brainer. So right guys, there you have it. As you guys can see by the score, so the Kobe comes out on top. Now as Flo just mentioned, it's not by a mile. It's more like millimetres, maybe a centimetre. Cheeky centimetre or so. Or two. Or two, or two. But yeah. Out on top, yet again, the Kobe takes the cake. So when we're talking overall, the Kobe is a better performer on the court, but not by much. No. But when we're talking price and value in the PG2, it is by much. Yeah. That's a terrible sentence, but it is by much. Yeah, the value in that one is a lot better than this one, if we're talking price. A lot better. 100%. So right guys, there you have it. As per usual, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and like this video to show your support. We really appreciate it and it helps us out massively. And of course, comment down below which shoe you preferred if you tried out in both. And if you haven't tried them both out, comment down below which shoe you'll be picking up if you could. Follow us on Instagram, at purekicks.ig. Twitter also, at purekicks underscore TW. And lastly, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing when it comes to pure kicks. Hit the bell next to it to get notified every time we drop a new video, whether it be our comparisons, our performance reviews, NBA talks, or just general bants. Make sure you hit that button and the bell to get notified every time. So that's it from us. This is the Nike PG2. This is the Kobe 360. We're pure kicks. Let's, Let's get it. Go.